hi guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking in this video we are going to handle the third networking project on our list so basically in the previous classes we managed to handle the first networking project and the second networking project and we said we'll be starting from a very basic networking project to a much complicated one so guys consider this project you know complicated than the previous one and the next one will be complicated than this one okay so it's step by step right also before we may begin suppose you have not subscribed to our channel guys we need your support we are doing this for you kindly click on the subscribe button like our video and drop a comment below okay feel most welcome again and let's begin the third networking project i will comment I'll say, let me put it up here, third networking project. And uh, the boundaries, I'll just okay guys this we have a problem here that we got from one of our student okay and the problem says i'll just open the word document where the problem is is located it's a case study as a and the problem says here is the problem as a part of your end here networking project you are required to design and implement vic modern hotel network the ne the hotel has three floors in the first floor three departments there are three departments including reception store and logistics in the second floor there are three departments too finance hr and sales okay sales and marketing finally in the third floor there are it and admin departments okay therefore the following are part of the consideration during the design and implementation number one there should be three routers connecting each floor. Remember there are three floors, okay? So each router to each floor. All routers should be connected to each other using serial DC heat cable, very important. Number three, the network between the router should be 10, this one, and this one, and this one, okay? And also, okay number four each floor is expected to have one switch that is placed in the respective floor okay so switch from the router pretty much simple then number five each floor is expected to have wi-fi network connected to laptops and phones good number six each department is expected to have a printer okay and again each department is each department is expected to be in different vlan with the following details so for example the first floor the first floor we have reception store and logistics so for example reception should be in vlan 80 with this network store should be in vlan 70 with this network the same way as logistic vlan 60 and this network okay the second floor we have finance hr and sales we run 50 30 40 and 30 the network of this one this one and this one finally on the third floor we have admin and it we run 20 and we run 10 with this network and this network okay that was point number seven so point number eight says use ospf use ospf as the routing protocol to advertise routes in the network okay then number nine, all devices in the network are expected to obtain IP address dynamically with their respective router configured as the DHCP server. Okay. Then number ten, all the devices in the network are expected to communicate with each other. Number eleven says, configure SSH in all the routers for remote login. Then number twelve. In IT department, 
add PC called test PC to this port, the first port, okay, and use it to test remote login. Remember, you have configured SSH in point number 11. So you're gonna use this PC here to test remote login, okay? Then finally, on point 13, configure port security to IT department switch to allow only test PC to access this port, okay? Then you are being told to use sticky method to obtain MAC address with violation mode of shutdown. Guys, this is a very simple but complicated pro problem, okay? It's quite different from what we have handled. The it's quite different from what we have handled in the previous classes, okay? We started from a very and a very, very simple networking project. Moving on to much complicated one. So this is the third project. It's a little bit challenging, okay? It's very huge, as you can see. A lot of protocols are needed to be configured. A lot of devices, departments, and several domains. So basically, guys, let's start analyzing the case study. We have been told that Vic Hotel, Vic Modern Hotel, has three floors. And in the first floor, we have three departments, it's reception, store, and logistics. In the second floor, we have three departments also, finance, HR, and sales and marketing. Finally, in the third floor, we have only two departments, IT and admin, okay? All right, so based on your design and implementation, we are needed to consider the following. There should be three routers connecting each floor. Okay? Three routers. All routers all routers should be connected with each other using serial DC cable. Then between the routers we need to use these networks. Okay? Alright. Each floor is expected to have one switch. One switch for each floor. And those switches are placed at the respective floors. Okay, each floor also is expected to have Wi-Fi network connected to, lap lap to connected to laptops and phones. We'll configure access points there. Each department is expected to have a printer. Good. Each department is expected to be in different VLANs with the following details given here, guys. As you can see, for first floor, second floor, and third floor the respective departments okay then we are required to use OSPF as the routing protocols as the routing protocol to advertise routes in the network okay and finally and also all the devices in the network are expected to obtain IP address dynamically with the rare IP address dynamically with their respective router configured as the DHCP server. They will configure DHCP server on the routers. Okay? All the devices in the network are expected to communicate with each other. Remember, we have almost eight VLANs here, and by default, devices in different VLANs will not communicate. So, we need to implement what is called inter-VLAN routing. Pretty much simple, guys. Very important. Number 11, configure SSH in all the routers for remote logging, okay? Remember, in what we discussed earlier, we said for remote logging, we can use Telnet or SSH protocol to log in, okay? But what differs is the security level of each protocol. You know, Telnet displays data or the communication payload in playtex but ssh encrypts the payload ssh is very secure than telling that's why we've been told here to use ssh as a method for remote login then in it department we are required to add one pc that is called test pc to this port switch port okay and use it to test remote login okay Finally, we are required to configure port security to ID IT department switch to allow 
only this PC, test PC, to access this port. Very important. Port security. Layer 2 security. Very, very important. And we are required to use Tiki method to obtain MAC address with the violation mode of shutdown. Guys, pretty much simple. So, after we have evaluated this case study, guys, the first approach that we should involve is to is the design part okay so we need to design a network based on the problem okay before we can begin configuration pretty much simple guys so i'll go back to our packet tracer and begin the design part okay so i'll open packet trace again place the three routers so i'll go back to our packet tracer and select 929 11 router three of them okay all right good so we have three routers so let's say this is first floor router f1 router f1 router copy and here should be F2 router, second floor. And here should be F3 routers. Okay. All right. Go back. Let's go back to our problem again. All routers should be connected to each other using serial DC cable. Guys, I want to show you how you can connect a serial cable to routers interface okay so i'll go to connections and choose serial dce so just over over these cables you'll see where it's written serial dce this one it's written down here okay so try to choose it and connect it there okay you know it won't connect by default okay until you enable serial port on those routers okay Serial, serial cables, we connect them to serial interfaces on the routers, okay? They cannot connect to any other port other than serial interfaces. Let's say gig 0 It won't, okay? So, I'll go back. So, I'll go to the routers and enable serial interfaces. Click on the router. Okay. This is the physical view of the router okay assume this is the physical view of the router there is a button inside here as you can see there is one zero then a green icon here okay the green icon tells that the router is on and it's running and there's a button here the zero is a button you can turn it on and off and to add a serial interface you must turn off the router so i'll click on the zero let me just click on the zero okay i'll click on the zero and here the green icon turned to white it's down right all right so let's add serial interfaces a serial interface on the router you come under the modules and under the module and here under the modules you choose w you choose hwic iPhone 2T. Okay, click on it and read down here. This one is a Cisco 2 port serial I speed 1 interface. Okay, so I'll drag this and place on an empty slot. It's up now. Okay, now we have successfully added a serial module. Okay, now turn on the router again. Click on the zero, it's up. Now it's green again here close this one go to the second router click and turn off the router then drag the serial interface module again turn on the router third router turn it off drag this module then turn on the router again and now let's connect them they will be connected successfully so I'll come to CLDC here and 
click on this router as you now see now the serial interfaces are now available serial 0 2 0 0 2 1 so I'll choose 0 2 0 to this router 0 2 0 then from this route again 0 2 1 2 0 2 0 and finally from this router here to this router here okay all right I'll place them up a little bit we are done with the connecting the routers okay so let's go back to this problem again and say that the network between the routers should be these ones okay so let me just copy all of them and come here and comment and paste them and say now the network there should be that one here it should be the second one let me delete this one and here it should be that one okay all right so the network between this router and this router should be this one this router and this router this router and this router should be this one and finally this router and this router should be this one pretty much simple step by step guys so each floor is expected to have one switch placed in the respective floor okay each each floor should have one switch for example this is floor one floor two floor three so i'll place a switch at every floor this is floor one switch floor two switch i say floor two switch okay and copy that and here should be floor one switch floor one switch okay and finally here should be floor three switch okay and let's do the connection i'll choose automatic to switch good then from this router to this one and finally from here to this one okay good step by step guys then each floor is expected to have wf wi-fi network connected to laptops and phones then each department is expected to have a printer okay let's go back to our packet trace of all right in the first floor guys we were told that there are three departments we are down in department three reception store and logistics okay so here in the first department we should have three departments okay three then the second department also here we should have three departments and finally in the third department we should have how many how many departments and finally in the third floor we should have how many departments two departments so considering our topology i'll modify things here such that you know this become our third floor where there are two departments okay because you know the space is very less for three departments if this is floor one okay so i'll say this is let me let me just modify here and make it floor floor one one and this one should be floor three okay floor three floor three router floor three switch and now let me modify here to floor one router okay and here should be floor one switch here should be floor three switch i'm modifying them to find space okay so this is floor one floor two and floor three okay in floor one we had how many department three departments okay all right so i'll place devices as per department we've been told each department should have at least a printer you know and a computer okay so a pc and a printer for the first department a pc and 
a printer for the second department and finally PC and a printer for the third department right okay so let's go back to second floor where we have three departments also I'll say PC and a printer PC here and a printer and finally PC and a printer okay all right so it's almost right it's almost then finally on the third floor we have only two departments third floor two departments pc printer finally also pc and a printer okay so let's do the cabling let's start from above connect here okay guys so we are done connecting the devices we are done connecting the devices so let's go back to our case study again each floor is expected to to have wi-fi network connected to laptops and phones so i'll place a access point at every floor in every floor i mean so for example this is the first access point. Let's say this is floor 2 access point. Floor 2 access point. Okay. Alright. So, another one. Floor 3 access point. Floor 3 access point, floor 3 access point, and finally floor 2 access point here. Okay. Floor 3, floor 1 access point, I mean. Okay. This is floor 1, floor 2, and floor 3. So I'll do the connection. Automatic. All right also here to here we'll do it very fast okay so guys basically we are done connecting the required devices so let's go back to our problem again each department is expected to be in different villains as per the following details okay for example reception villain 10 with this network okay all right so reception is in first floor the reception is located on the first floor we try to separate the boundaries sorry i'll try to separate the boundaries with an outline color of black okay and say this is first floor okay this is second floor and finally this is third floor okay somewhere there so I'll comment and say this second floor sorry sorry this is second floor And this is third floor. And finally, this is first floor. So let's different. So let's separate the departments using the boundaries also. So for example, 
in the first floor we have reception that's reception let's say okay then another one is called stores that stores and finally we have we have logistics okay and in the second floor we have also three departments so let's say this is HR this is finance and finally this is the other department okay all right so in the third floor finally we have two departments the first department let's say there and the second department okay so i'll adjust the devices to be in inside a department right okay i will name the departments Borders. So guys, we are done. As you can see, our topol is looking very, very beautiful. And we have separated the floors plus the departments. Second floor, we have sales, HR, finance. Third floor, we have IT, admin. And first floor, we have reception store and logistic. So let's go back to our problem again. Let's comment the VLANs plus the network. I'll do it very fast because these are what we have learned previously. So I'll start with the IT department, which is VLAN 10. VLAN 10, a network of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. I'll copy, copy, and come back to admin and say this is VLAN 20. A network of 2.0 2.0 then a reception should be villain uh, let me check villain haiti night network of uh, dot villain haiti a network of 8.0 then it's villain haiti stores should be VLAN 70 a network of 7.0 VLAN 70 then finally logistics should be VLAN uh, 60 a network of 6.0 50-40-30 
okay guys so we are done with the comments as you can see now our diagram is looking a little bit complicated again okay and our diagram is looking much complicated depicting the problem that we have got okay so let's go back again to our problem so from number eight guys will require configuration part so i'll finish up with the decent part first okay so let's see what's remaining we have uh, we have a printer we have access points we have a switch the comments are here for the networks and the routers are connected using this serial dc cable and finally we have three routers as per the case study so basically guys what's remaining is to begin the configuration part we want to begin configuration part okay and to begin our configuration part guys you know the routers are connected using serial dc cable and for them to forward traffic then we must enable clock rate at the serial dc interfaces okay if you want to know which interface is the serial dc you just hover over the interface for example when you hover over this one you will see serial zero to one then there's this clock here but on this side it's not here meaning this interface is the DC interface okay then you move over this one also you see this interface is the DCE interface so you must enable the clock rate on those particular interfaces okay so I'll do that one very very fast and enable and also to turn up the interfaces as you can see they are red red meaning they're in shutdown state so I'll go to this router first okay and go to CLI, say no, enable, config T, then interface, serial, 0 slash 2 slash 0, enter, no shutdown, then also serial, 0 slash 2, 1, no shutdown, then gig, 0 slash 0, sorry, it's interface. It should be interface gig zero zero, no shutdown. Okay, then which interface is the serial DC interface? Okay, so let's move on. It's this one and this one. As you can see, there's a clock here. There's a clock here. So it's zero two one and zero two zero. So I'll click on the same router. Say, I'll try to retrieve the above configuration interface zero two zero. Then clock. You just see clock rate and let's question it there's a range of clock rates that we can select but in our case i'll always recommend you choose this one 64,000. okay 64,000 bits per second hit enter then also serial 21 clock rate 64,000. You hit enter. Do right. We are done with the first router. This router here. So let's go back to the second router. No. Say no. Table. Config T. Config T. Interface. Serial. Zero. Slash two zero. No shot. Another one is interface zero slash two one. No shot. Another one is interface gig zero slash zero. No shot. Okay, so let's check if that router has any DCE interface. When you go over it, there's no clock sign. Okay, it's just serial zero to one. Zero zero to one. And like this one is clock 021 okay so let's go back to this third router 
click on the third router and say no then enable config t and then interface serial zero two one sorry invalid interface so let, i'll just go to check it again it's one one not two one okay it's zero to one one and this one is uh let me check it again Okay, so we have interface serial zero one zero no shot. Then another one is serial zero one one no shot. And finally, that is connecting to the switch is in always interface gig zero shot zero. Then say no shot. Okay. Then do right. Okay which interface as the dc he interface is interface serial zero one one the clock one okay all right so i'll try to retrieve okay one one clock rate 64 000. hit enter all right okay what configuration is remaining so let's just go back here the vlans so i'll go to these switches and configure vlans for example in the first floor we have three departments each department different vlan okay so i'll click on the switch cli enable config t then we want to configure vlans on these interfaces for example this is fa0 slash 2 and fa0 slash 3 okay then this one fa0 slash 5 and fa0 slash 4 for vlan 70 and finally fa0 slash 6 to fa0 slash 8 vlan 60 okay i'll go to the switch hit enter then switch port mode access switch port access vlan 80 okay hit enter all right so also from fa0 slash 4 to 5 should access vlan 7 switch port mode access then switch port access vlan 7 then finally FA0 slash 6 to 8 okay should access VLAN 60 okay assigning VLAN numbers to interfaces do right okay we are done before we exit guys you know these ports here are in access mode and we said access ports access one VLAN at a time and for them to communicate with other departments guys you know the traffic will go through this interface so this interface should be a trunk interface so fa0 slash 1 interface fa0 slash 1 switch port mode trunk and you do right we're done with that switch let's go back to the second the, the second floor second floor switch this one okay enable config t okay so i'll close that and say this is a phase i start from this one fa0 slash 2 to 3 should access vlan 50 interface range FA0 slash 2 to 3 switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 50 
okay then this one the two this one is uh, sorry f5 to 6 okay 5 to 6 4 to 4 to 4 to 5 i mean interface range 4 to 5 4 to 5 okay switch port mode i try to retrieve the above configuration access vlan 40 okay sorry sorry so it's it's vlan it should be 40 not 30 it should be 40 i'll, I'll modify it here is 30 sorry here is that then here it should be 40 okay all right click on the same switch again this is from 7 to this one is uh, 8 from 6 to 8 okay villain cut so enter range 6 to 6 to 8 this put mode access access villain 30 do right then finally this one this interface fa0 slash 1 trunk switch port mode trunk trunk you do right and exit okay finally this one we, we're going to configure vlans on this switch we have two vlans vlan 10 and vlan 20 so from vlan 20 is uh, let's say vlan 10 is gig 00 gig 02 then this one is gig 03 and this one is gig 06 so i'll try and push gig 06 here gig 02 to gig 03 enable config t interface range fa0 zero uh, 2 to 3 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 10 okay then 4 to 6 4 sorry sorry 4 to 6 switch port mode access then access vlan 20 then that the trunk interface fa0 slash 1 which port mode trunk do right we're well done guys so these are trunk interface trunk interface trunk interface access interfaces access interfaces access interfaces we have successfully configured vlans on every switch okay the first floor switch has three vlans for each department the same case for second floor switch three vlans for each department finally on the third floor switch we have two vlans for two departments okay all right so let's go back to our configuration so let's go back to our problem and see what's remaining is there something that you can configure on the switch so that we can be done once and for all okay there's something here that we'll configure when we are handing port security so let's leave it pending what's now remaining guys it's very important you know we need to configure IP address to the router's interface, okay? For example, we, we've been told that between the routers, we should use this network. This one, this network. Between these two routers, this network. Between these two routers, this network, okay? All right, so let's begin the configuration. I'll go to this first router and configure this interface for this network this interface for this network okay so before that which interface is this serial 
zero two zero. So interface serial zero two zero. Okay. Then IP address should be ten dot ten dot ten dot. Now here is what you need to be very very careful. This is a network. This is not an IP address. You know, we consider this subnet mask. Should I start the notation subnet mask? Basically, it tells you that there are only two valid hosts. So the first host will take 10.10.10.5. This is network. Okay. Now the second host will take 10.10.6. So this one takes .5. This one will take .6. Okay. Dot five and subnet mask should be two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two. Good, right? Okay, now we go back to this interface also. This is serial zero two one should take dot nine. Okay, dot nine, right. Serial 021 IP address should be dot nine here. Okay, and you hit enter. Done. Do you right. We are done configuring IP address on this router's interface. So let's go back to this router. Serial zero serial. Zero zero one zero. Then IP address should be ten dot ten dot ten dot one. Okay. Ten dot ten dot ten dot one. IP address ten dot ten dot ten dot one subnet mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two you hit enter okay so we come back to serial zero two zero one one okay and now you know this interface took dot nine meaning now it must take dot ten because there are only two valid host IDs here dot nine and dot ten because this is the network and the subnet mask is this one okay subnetting so 1.1 1 .1, serial 1 serial 0 1 1 should take dot 10 okay because here took dot 9 here must be dot 10 hit enter and you do right we are done on this route also okay so let's go to this route enable config t interface serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 ip address the ip address of 0 slash of 0 0 should be which interface is this 0 0 it should be 10 dot this 2.5 now and now this one should take dot 6 okay all right 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 6 select mask of 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 252 hit enter and finally 0 to 1 should take 0 to 1 should take 10 dot 2 okay because this one took dot 1 all right and there are only two valid host ids dot 1 and dot 2 do right okay guys so we are done configuring ip address on the router's interface guys pretty much simple and very very important guys kindly watch it over again if you don't understand how to configure IP address to the router's interface. Also, there are videos that have already been made. Kindly check out. Kindly check out on them. 
and practice on your own okay and subnetting we have covered subnetting on the first project second project and now this is just a walkover for subnetting okay all right back to the case study this one is done these are done these are done so let's go back down use ospf as the routing protocol to advertise routes okay and also all the devices in the network are obtained are required to obtain ip address automatically and communication between different vlans okay first of all we are going to configure inter vlan routing then we are configuring dhcp server okay because you know in this department guys we have said that these devices should obtain this network should be in this network i mean right these devices here should be in this the should be in this network and how are they going to be in this network well the case study says that they should be assigned ip address automatically we are going to use this route here as the dhcp server okay all right and dhcp server guys mostly goes hand in hand with intervillian routing okay whenever we have many vlans whenever we have multiple vlans in the network we configure intervillian routing plus dhcp server okay so i'll start with intervillian routing and i'll start on this router first floor router click on the router and say exit how do we configure intervillian routing we create sub interfaces okay and we assign vlan number and ip address to those sub interfaces and that ip address will act as the default gateway to the respective vlan so for example let's go on interface gig 0 0 dot let's check this is gig 00, zero. All right gig 00. zero and how many villains do we have here we have three villains 80 70 and 60 okay so let's go on interface gig 00, zero dot 80 because here is villain 80 okay 80 that's sub interface created then you say encapsulation dot one q the villain number number 80 don't forget okay here th this villain number okay all right then you assign ip address to this sub interface you know that ip address will act as the default gateway to this subnet here to this villain here okay so for example you know this villain so for example this villain here should have a network of 102.168.8.0 so let's say the default gateway will be 8.1 okay so ip address 102.168.8.1 then subnet mask which is 255.255.255.255 dot zero okay you hit enter then you get another sub interface okay which is now dot 70 use the villain numbers 70 okay encapsulation dot 1q 70 same thing then which network 7.0 so let's say the default gateway will take 7.1 so i'll try to receive the above configuration and say this is 7.1 and you hit enter right exit third wheel okay here you get third sub interface for this villain okay all right so let's say interface gig 00 dot 60 okay villain 60 okay then encapsulation dot 1q 60 all right then ip address you know the, IP, the network is 102.168.6.0 so let's say the default router will take 6.1 okay ip ip address 
should be 6.1 here 6.1 okay and do right exit okay guys so we have configured intervillain here on this route and a moment we will place IP address on these devices you know a moment we will configure IP address on these devices they will communicate even though they are from different VLANs okay so basically let's finish on this flow let's configure DCP server on the same router here okay the same router so you know we have three you know we have three departments here and now we'll need to create three pools whenever we're configuring the CP server we create the pools the first command is to enable the service service DHCP okay then you create the pools how many pools do we have how many departments do we have reception store and logistics now three pools okay so IP DHCP pool let's say reception okay hit enter then the network which network this one okay one and two dot one six eight dot eight dot zero separate mask of two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero okay pretty much simple network of this one as indicated okay now default router default gateway the default gateway will be this IP address of the sub interface we created here as you can remember this sub interface gig 0 0 0.8 IP address was 8.1 okay don't forget guys pretty much simple so IP address now you say default router 192.168.8.1 okay and now DNS server Let's make it the same as uh, default router 192.168.8.1. Okay, and you exit. Let's create another pool for store IP DHCP pool store network of the network should. I'll try to retrieve the above configuration a network of uh, 7.0 and uh, the default router of 7.1 as you can remember the IP address the sub interface we created okay while configuring interval and route here this one okay this sub interface the IP address of this sub interface we created it here okay this one okay very simple guys don't forget all right so hit enter and say default router also, also should be I mean DNS server should be also 7.1 exit and finally the last pool is logistics IP DHCP pool logistics okay network network should be 6.0 6.0 then the full router should be 6.1 I hope you remember what 6.1 stands for. The next server also should be 6.1. Okay. Exit. Do right. Okay. So, guys, let's test. You know, we have only configured DSCP server and interval and routing on this router. So, let's con test if these devices are allocated ip address dynamically so I'll try to go to this one and say it if it will take eight dot something so i'll go back to and say dcp give it time give it time as you can see either two and the parameters have been set successfully so i'll try to i'll try to go so i'll try this one if it's allocated seven or something As you can see 702 so let's say if it can communicate to 8 dot ping 102.168.8.2 okay because we have configured interval and routing meaning they will communicate right pretty much simple as you can see successful all right also let me try to 
let me try to check on this also if it will pick 6 dot something 6 dot 2 as you can see right guys so i'll do the same on this router here and this router here i'll configure the cp server here and intervalent routing here the same for here okay so i'll go very fast because i've done them on this router so let's save time click on this So let's test DCP configuration and intervalent routing on the second floor. So I'll go back to PC5 and check if it has been assigned IP address automatically with 3 dot something. Good. 3 dot 2. Here should be 4 dot something. Four dot two, good. And yes, should be five dot something. Five dot two. And to test communication between multiple villain, ping one and two dot one sixty eight dot three dot two. Give it time. I've configured intervillain routing. I believe it they will communicate successfully. As you can see, successfully. So finally, let's configure intervillain routing and DCP server on the third floor, okay? Where we have only two departments. So I'll click on the router and say enable config T, then interface gig 0 slash 0 dot the villain number here 10, okay? encapsulation dot 1q10 the villain number also then ip address sorry ip address 12.168 dot 1 dot 1 subnet mask of 255 dot 255.255.0 okay exit now another sub interface interface gig 0 slash 0 dot the villain number 20 okay encapsulation dot 1q20 ip address 192.168.2.1 dot dot subject mask of 255.255.255.0 dot 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 hit enter okay exit now let's configure dcp server service dcp Enable the service. Then create the pools. IP, IP, DHCP pools. DHCP pool. Pool, let's say IT. Okay. The network of 192.168.1.0. Subject mask of 255.255.25. Sorry. 255.0. Okay. Then default router should be 
192.168.1.1 DNS servers should be 192.168.1.1 okay exit another pool IP DHCP sorry DHCP pool admin admin <coughs> network 1 and 2 dot 168 dot 2 dot 0 mask of 255 dot 255 dot 255 dot 0 okay default router 1 and 2 dot 168 dot 2 dot 1 dns server 1 and 2 dot 168 dot 2 dot 1 exit do right so let's test the configuration i'll click on the pc and try hcp check if it will pick one or something one or two successful again here two dot something two dot two successful okay communication for intervillance ping 192.168.2.2 okay sorry this is let me check again okay this is pc6 vlan 10 pc6 here it will try to ping pc7 here vlan 20 having ip address of 2.2 .2, okay okay let's test successful guys dcp intervillian routing configured successfully all right guys so what's remaining guys we are required to configure the devices such that such that all the devices in the network can communicate but let me try to ping from this pc6 to to a pc in logistic that is located on the first floor okay pc0 is uh, 6.2 so i'll try to ping 6.2 it will not communicate why the routing protocol has not been configured ping 102.168.6.2 it won't communicate 6.2 can you see destination or and reship so we need to configure routing protocol guys on these routers all of them okay to enable the routers here to advertise the connected networks okay for example this router here is connected to how many networks five networks this network this network this network this network and this network so we need to configure OSPF protocol on this route to advertise all these networks. So I'll begin. Enable config config t then router OSPF 10. Let's say 10. Okay. Then network 192.168 then the network this router here this f1 router this f1 router needs to advertise this network this network this network this network and this network so let's start by 10.4 10.8 so network 10.10.10.4 okay Third mask of 255.255.255 dot 252 and you hit enter sorry we have forgotten the area okay and say area zero okay and you hit enter another one is eight this network this one right okay area zero the same area okay area zero hit enter all right so let's go back to these networks that are connected to the switch 
and 6.0 very simple another network is say network network 192.168.8.0 dot silent mask of 255.255.255.0 area 0 don't forget area okay another network is uh, 7.0 Another network is uh, 6.0 and uh, do right. Okay, guys, so we are done configuring OSPF on this router. Okay, so let's go to configure OSPF on this router here. I'll do the same thing. Don't, don't worry about this one. This this one are happening because we have not excluded the range of IP address that should not be assigned to all devices dynamically in the network. Okay, so basically, router SPF, router OSPF. Ten. Okay, let's just give it the number ten. Then. 10.0 and 10.8 network 10.10.10.0 separate mask of 255.255.255.252 area 0 another network is 10.8 good then another network network 192.168. Dot. It's three four five. Sorry. So network should be one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot three dot zero subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 area 0 okay another network should be 4.0 4.0 another network should be 5.0 5.0 hit enter and do right okay so we have successfully configured SPF on this router okay so finally here Configure SPF here. Router SPF. SPF 10. Then the network should be. We have 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot. Dot 0 and dot 4. Okay. Dot 0 subnet mask of 255. Dot 255. Dot two five five dot two five two area zero okay another network should be dot four they will form adjacencies as you can see they will form two adjacencies okay all right so the networks that are remaining are one dot zero and two dot zero so I'll go and do that very first another one another one should be network should be 192.168.1.0 subnet mass of 255.255.255.0 then area 0 another network should be 2.0 area 0 and do right okay guys so we are done configuring OSPF protocol on these routers so basically i believe the devices in the network can communicate so i'll try again to ping from this pc here to to this pc here remember the first time we tried to ping we found destination host unreachable and as you can see sorry as you can see destination host unreachable so let's try to ping again the same ip address and you hit enter just give it time OSPF protocol has been configured successfully. Definitely, they will communicate.
as you can see what's happening successful okay all right so let's also try to ping from this pc to this printer here so i'll go to this printer sorry i'll go back to this printer and say to dynamic dynamic come in 3.3 i'll try to ping 3.3 3.3 just give it time my spear protocol has been configured successfully meaning devices in the day network will be communicating we have configured intervillain successfully dcp server con successfully and ospf protocol so let's check what's remaining these are done so number 11 to configure ssh before we go to number 11 guys there's something that we are forgetting well, the wi-fi network okay let's do it first remember we have access points to provide network what to provide wireless network to the devices at every floor on every floor i mean okay so let's assume let's assume there's a laptop here there is a tablet here and there's a smartphone here let's just place it somewhere here, okay let's just place them at one place okay so for the laptop so for laptop you'll click on the laptop and power the laptop first then remove this module and replace with the wireless model wpc okay then turn on the laptop again and close it will now connect right whichever access point it will find near it it will connect to it okay all right so i'll go to this i'll go to this access point and configure it port one and say ssd should be let's say floor one floor one and password should be floor one floor at one two three okay okay all right as you can see now they have now disconnected from this access point so i'll go to laptop go to desktop the laptop must be powered on i forgot to power it on okay now it's on so i'll go to pc wireless and check the available wireless network so i'll refresh you will see floor one here just give it time okay here's floor one let's connect the password was floor at one two three it will connect i believe as you can see it has now connected to this access point now let's connect phone and tablet also it's flow one flow one then password is flow one flow i mean at one two three okay it will connect on the other side just give it time as you can see now let's do for tablet the tablet sh should connect to floor floor one floor one the password should be flow at one two three definitely it will connect just give it time just give it time as you can see so I'll try to place them below here. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm done. I'll try to place them here. Okay. All right. So, what's remaining? This access point. Also, let's place some devices, tablet, and smartphone. For laptop, I said you go, you turn it off. You remove this model, you replace with the WPC300N, then you turn on the laptop again, 
and close and now click on the access point come to port 1 the name let's say flow 2 flow 2 the password should remain the same let's assume flow at one two three okay so we go to this laptop go to desktop pc wireless go to connect and you refresh flow 2 will come here and flow 1 you know because we have set the high ssd we want to connect flow 2 connect and the password is flow at one two three connect good so for tablet also while is zero you come to flow flow two then password should be flow at one two three good then finally you come to phone you come to config while is zero the wi-fi name is flow two password is flow at one two three flow at one two three done i believe they will connect okay so for this access point guys you know i will not do it as per now because you know i believe you have learned how to configure access point as per now right all right so i'll assume that you understand how to configure them press password and to connect various devices so i'll go back to the case study again understand the problem so we are main with configuring ssh for remote logging okay let's go back to our topology and configure ssh on this router this one this one and this one how do we configure ssh pretty much simple i'll click on the router and begin the configuration start with this one exit how do we configure ssh the first thing that we should do guys is to configure the host name of that particular device for example you know this is a router the default name of every device of all the routers is router okay so let's configure our host name so let's say host name host name let's say this one f f3 router okay enter good as you can as you can see now if the default name has changed to f3 route then guys pretty much simple we need to configure the domain name okay ip domain domain name okay for example let's say it's gtx for our case okay then after configuring the domain name we configure the username and password okay so username 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 let's say gtx then password also let's say gtx okay something very simple as that okay then after configuring you know the first step was to configure us name the second step is to configure domain name okay now the third step is to configure username and password fourth step okay to generate cryptos so crypto generate crypto key it's always crypto key generate r s a 10 24 okay sorry 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 crypto key generate rs and you hit enter right then it will ask you how many bits in the model modulus let's say 10 24 okay and you hit enter good it's now okay it's now okay guys so let's enable ssh on the vty interface i'll just go to lane vty lane vty 0 to 15 there are always 16 interfaces for vty users 0 to 15 is 16 interfaces okay we hit enter and say login local okay sorry 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 hit enter and now transport input ssh pretty much simple guys and you are done configuring ssh on this route just hit enter and do right you exit 
okay you exit okay now you go back to the second router this one enable config t there are a lot of there are a lot of voice there are a lot of background voice so i'll try to do it very fast host name and uh, let's say f2 router okay now ip domain name i just try to use detach again okay now username and password username let's say gtech password also dtech okay and now crypto crypto key generate generate rsa and you hit enter then how many bits in in the modulus 10 24 okay and now line ZTY 0 to 15. Okay. Login. No, oh, sorry. Login. Log call. Okay. Then transport. Input SSH. Okay. Do right. We have configured SSH successfully on that router. And finally, on this router here. Enable. Config T. Okay. Hostname, the first step to configure SSH is to configure SNM. Hostname should be, let's say, F1 router. Okay. Then you configure IP domain name, domain name. Let's say GTH. Okay. Then username and password, username. Let's say GTH. Password should be also GTH gtech like that sorry 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 gtech like that sorry then crypto key generate rsa okay 1024 okay line vty we enter the line vty interface zero okay then login local Okay, then transport, transport I mean, input, SSH, hit enter, do right. Okay, then you exit. We have configured SSH on all these routes. And now, let's go back to our problem. In IT department, add PC and call it test PC to port fa01 fa01 is connected to to the router so we cannot use it let's say fa02 let me check on this pc good the pc6 is connected to fa02 so i'll modify name to test pc okay all right now what's up again to test remote login how do we test telnet guys very very simple so guys it's time to test remote login ssh using ssh protocol how do we test ssh click on the router click on the pc i mean come to command prompt and then you just type this ssh then hyphen l the username username was gtech okay and ip address for example let's say we want to access the route f2 router interface from our pc so we use the domain name that we use the username that we set here plus the ip address of this route the ip address can be ip address of this interface this interface or the sub interfaces okay so let's take the IP address of this one. Serial 010, which is a serial 010 is a 10.1, okay? So it's SSH, iPhone L, then the username, what details, okay? And now IP address of the F2 router, this one. 
okay it's 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 1 okay and you hit enter can you now see something we are requested for password Wh which what was our password it was jitters okay can you see now guys we have obtained f2 router from our test pc successful okay and now we can exit let's try to obtain f1 router interface from our pc f1 router ip address should be 10.5 um, 10.5 10.9 or the ip address of other sub interfaces you take any ip address configured to any interface so for example in this case let's take ip address of a sub interface which is 6.1 okay all right And then git it git it then one and two dot one sixty eight dot six dot one we are requested for password git it as you can see f1 router here very very successful guys f1 router right okay guys so we have managed to configure almost everything on this topology so let's check what's remaining configure post security to it department switch to allow only test pc to to this interface okay use sticky method to obtain mac address okay so i'll go back to this switch okay click on this switch and start configuring port security and uh, to enable only test pc to be connected to this interface okay so configure that enable config t then switch port sorry the first thing that we do we enter that interface okay it's interface fa0 slash 2 because f1 that is required here is connected to the router here we cannot change because we made a lot of configuration okay click on the switch then switch port port security hit enter then switch port port security maximum maximum only one device okay switch port port security then switch port port security maximum only one the device hit enter then switch port port security mac address should be obtained through each method sticky okay good then switch port port security violation they are protect restrict and shutdown we mean told to use shutdown okay and it and do right okay guys so we are done with everything we are done configuring everything to verify our configuration i'll start from bit i'll start from below let's verify port security i'll go to this switch and say do show start as you can see interface fa0 slash 2 as vlan 10 okay then it does port security right then Sticky method for obtaining MAC address. Pretty much simple. Exit. Exit. Show port security. So 
sorry do show pot pot security hit enter as you can see we have only one device that should be connected to this pot and the evaluation mode should be shut down okay all right to verify what else ssh ssh is working okay and just to verify ss and just to show you the configuration i'll just say enable do show start okay show start just a minute go as you can see guys here are the ssh configuration we have configured ssh successfully and other parameters or spf has been configured successfully any other parameter on this router they appear next to the router's interfaces and the sub interfaces have been configured successfully guys this is a very important project and everything is working perfectly fine as expected so everything is working perfectly perfectly fine as required in the case study we have configured everything guys and now what's remaining guys is is on your part practice more and more subscribe to our channel so that you can get more of this project we'll be uploading projects every friday so stay tuned guys subscribe to our channel support our channel and drop a comment always guys it means a lot to us like our videos guys it means a lot it means a lot to us we love you so much bye and see you again in the next project